Hey guys, Video Fletcher, and uh, welcome to the article that I've been writing for quite a while now. Um, on and off, I've been writing it. Now, for those that have been asking and wondering why I haven't posted any Gears of War Judgment, why I stopped playing, what's going on, this is the video for you. Hopefully, you will be able to stick around and listen to it because this will be no doubt my last Gears of War video. I've put a lot of, a lot of effort into this. Um, I'm just looking for some feedback. Um, you can comment on my blog, on my website, um, I'm more likely to read the comments on there. Um, there'll be a link below to read the article. The footage you're seeing now is the last time I played Gears of War, it's just a session. Um, I will advise you to more likely listen to this like a podcast. I've put gameplay footage in the background just because it's Gears and some people prefer to watch, whereas others like to listen. So, I'd say go and get yourself a cup of tea if you want to listen to this or read along. Um, take an hour out, I don't know how long this is going to take but it might take a while um, and I would advise you to read along um, with the blog at one side because it has pictures that demonstrate it better than some of my words can um, now this article hasn't been proofread fully um, but it's nearly done um, so I just use it as a script um, so anyway without further ado this is, should be my last Gears of War talk um, so for all those that ask, or all those people on the forums that say, you know, um, oh well what do you think about this, or oh, if they tweak this it would do this, you know, stuff like that, then point them in the direction of this article, I think this sums up about everything. There are a few things I've missed out because I can't talk forever, but there are 35 pages I've wrote, um, so I think that's the most in-depth anyone's ever typed about on Gears, or I don't see anyone doing stuff like that, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it, I want to do it. So, there you go. So, again, without further ado, here's the article. Um, again, samuelfletcher.co.uk, and if you go to the blog section, um, it will be there where you can comment. Um, I'd, it'd be good if anyone could tweet it, favourite it, like it, um, you know, share it around. That would be good um, to get some more eyes on it. So, again, you'll have to look at the pictures because the pictures have little captions, but I'm going to ignore them for now. So, Gears of War, the third-person shooter franchise that quite honestly revolutionised the console genre for a large period of time, and yet somehow appears to be falling off the face of gaming. How is it possible that a game in the early 2006-2008 to 2008 period had been constantly and comfortably competing with the top three spot, somehow has become a game that can take onwards at 15 minutes to find a single PvP matchup? In my final video, my analysis, I will cast my nearly seven years of playtime, community interaction and thought upon the game, where it has succeeded, where it has soared high and above the competition, and how its spiral of downwards popularity was inevitable but ultimately controllable. I may sound, I may sound rather clinical in my words, but trust me when I say, Gears of War, up until this point, was by far the most fun and enjoyment I have ever had on any game. Just to show... I have put some thought into this, there will be many statistics that can be found upon reading Major Nelson's blog and finding past archives slash talks. For those that have read my previous long article, then this video or article, however you are finding it, will try to build upon that as many claim my article was mere speculation in that no one could possibly know how Judgment would shake up their franchise for good or worse. So here I am, a little after four weeks into the launch of Epic Games' new iteration of the Gears of War franchise. Judgment. So, here I am, ready and waiting to judge it. So thanks for taking the time to read. Who knows who will read or listen to this, but if you do stick around, thanks. And also thanks for supporting my small silly channel since nigh on 2007. If you think I am wrong on some sections, then that's fine. Just move on to a new section. Read the next section with open eyes. One thing you should know in all of this is that perception is reality. Now think about that, perception is reality. If you, for example, stream or make content and 99% of the viewer base or fans believe you are wrong, then simply, you are wrong. You may not like it, but that's how the world works. If you killed a man and you are on death row, you are a murderer. Regardless of innocence, perception is reality. I'm going to... I'm not going to take my time. I mean, sorry. I'm going to... I'm going not this time to try be brief. I'm in fact going to mention every single thing that I have thought about the game, good or bad. I have played Gears of War since 2006. Seven years later, I am running a channel, still actively playing, albeit less, 
and while well simply making patch videos, balance videos to keep the community in the loop, tutorials for players, and fun videos to try spice up an ever bland and sombre community, and rage ones, they're always pretty good. Over this year, I have literally read over 100,000 and received 100,000 100, comments and received 1 million views in relation to the game. Not lots, but considering that I aim my videos to the adults in the community and I refuse to cater to the children that YouTube is run by, then that for me is certainly enough to give an opinion on. So here is an overview of what I feel needs changing and importantly what is currently good and previously good. I've had hundreds of hours of discussions with players, people in game chat, competitive players, casuals, friends that don't own the game, plus those comments etc on my channel that aims to grow and improve the franchise and point out in flaws so it indeed can grow. I'm not here to moan, I am past that, only here to help. I'll try to break it down into sections that I see fit and trust me I'm bound to miss out all the little things. It's actually quite hard to put this into any sort of order because the forums and social aspects of the game affect the player base, the player base is affected by that social element, the maps affect population, so does the marketing, the skill cap, the DLC etc. So I'll just let the topics flow and hope that they all directly and indirectly, indirectly lead and affect each other. Marketing. This is, a, this is an important topic, but one that I am going to glance over for the sake of you and me. Now let me point out some, some of the points are, are not hard. Sorry, let me start again. Now let me point out some of the points are hard not to delve into early or overlap, but here is my take and generalization on the topic. Marketing and driving players to your game is obviously the first challenge. Here is my take on what happened and greatly summed up, obviously. I personally found Gears of War 1 through their television campaign. You know that corpse advert with the Mad World song, I'm sure you all know it by now. I can't imagine how many other people bought the game after seeing that dark, gripping, graphically awesome scene. I know personally the internet wasn't quite as large then, YouTube marketing campaigns wouldn't have worked, same with Twitter, but I really do feel the future games of the franchise really missed that television marketing, and importantly, correct marketing. You have to know your audience, and know it well. There's no point trying to sell a, Fer a Ferrari to a student when he can't even afford coffee. You get the point. I know the internet is this massive thing, and if your games are getting slowly less and less players, then it's tempting to cut marketing, but I would say marketing is one of the areas you should not cut the budget on. Maybe the future games, a la Gears of War 2, 3, Judgment, really did have a good TV campaign, and I just missed it because I watch more internet TV than regular TV. But then again, maybe that's the idea, more people are watching the internet so we'll skip the TV altogether, but then again, I also managed to see Black Ops multiplayer trailer on the TV, and I barely watch TV, and plus, they don't really need the marketing, but they still do it. Obviously they have a bigger budget, but even so, the marketing for Gears of War Judgment was almost embarrassing to the point that my small channel gained 5,000 views on a no locust in multiplayer video, and another 35,000 on Gears of War changes. People in Gears of War 3 lobbies thought I was trolling, when I told them that the changes about the changes because literally nobody knew. I wonder how many people bought the game thinking it would be more of the same and then were shocked at the multiplayer. There was just no marketing, and even the small bits on YouTube from Epic was so amazingly uninspiring that there's no wonder no newcomers picked up the game. And if they did, and they are new, then damn, their views on Gears of War must be different to veteran players. It used to be this dark, gritty, gory, 18 plus game that was fast and intense. Now the marketing is this jokey bird from Kilo Squad introducing you to Team Deathmatch. It's uninspiring and it's lost its gears feel. Damn, there isn't even Locust in multiplayer anyway. I mean, the only promotion it had was a demo of one bland map on a mode that is actually really good, but they demoed it on the worst map, no doubt putting even more people off. When it comes to marketing, they should have gone to its roots, have a dark gritty landscape, introduce the main bad guy, then boom, ramp up the speed, fast paced multiplayer clips, scrap the tactical element and show that this game is gritty, bloody and fast. Don't tell them to, listen up soldier, this is team deathmatch. The people that like Call of Duty, play Call of Duty. 
appeal to the own audience you worked so hard on getting in 2006. The game, and importantly the hype, wasn't wasn't big enough to to be not marketed solely to the forum dwellers and internet, especially the internet, because damn, they were already pretty cynical about this franchise as a whole, and well, they were really put off by the limited news, even updates in the forums from developers' podcasts didn't really stem the flow of backlash. They wanted to be reassured, not have info hidden or jumbled in a new complex order. There is a lot more I could say, but that will suffice quite frankly. They aimed their game at a market that only reads negative things. With the internet, you have to be careful. It goes one way or the other. There aren't many neutrals on here, and that's the nature of anonymity. So what you're looking at now, if you're not looking at it, is a, it's a picture of player bases. It says Grand Theft Auto main sales, 85 million. Uh, Modern Warfare, 65 million. Xbox Live monthly subscribers, 40 million. League of Legends monthly players, 32 million. Uh, daily active players, League of Legends, 12 million. And for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, it's 3.3 million. So, player base. What is player base? Player base is quite simply the population that is playing that game. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know the player base of Gears of War, but I'll simply state from some fairly logical and obvious points. Games are now a business, and we must treat them as that. They must be viable in order to sustain their current mass, so to speak, or grow. Games aren't simply allowed to shrink and receive the same support financially. They are a business. However, I honestly don't believe any console franchises really grasp the concept of how to implement a sustainable cash flow into their business or game without honestly pissing off the vast, the vast part of their consumer base. Also, I don't really want to discuss the competitive, as to me personally, some of the games are competitive, and others are merely popular, so get on the circuit. But being popular, I guess, is half of the battle, as it is a spectator sport, so to speak. So let's get back on track to the whole player base concept for Gears of War. In layman's terms, here is our, how I see games. You have X number of players that have your game or own your games. For console, you have X number of players that will rent your game before purchasing, or look at footage, demos, reviews, and base their purchase without really even playing the game. I know I have done that on many occasions. Out of the pool of, out of the pool of number of people, a percentage of people will go on to do a few things. Some play single player offline. Others head straight into multiplayer. Some play both and stay and become a regular player. That's a massive generalisation, but you get the point. Now of these players, you will again have a percentage that will spend on your DLC, skins or your microtransactions. A percentage that will introduce players to your game, and even a percentage of people that will watch and pay to go and watch tournaments. Now that's a lot of percentages, so with so many damn niches, how the hell do you keep everyone entertained and happy? It's a massive job to make a successful game, you have to at least smash one of these things out of the park. You have to say, make your campaign so brilliant that the multiplayer, people just see the multiplayer as a bonus, and the single player experience was enough. Bioshock 2 springs to mind, the multiplayer was laggy, it had issues, but the single player just about pulled through. But trust me, even then some people were saying focus on the single player, forget multiplayer, it almost backfired. Similarly, Call of Duty has such a damn terrible single player, but who cares? There are millions online, you never have to wait for matches, you can unlock camos, and hell, if the game annoys you, you can play it in a massive party and have a blast for the most part. Regular DLC keeps it fresh, lots of updates, feedback, it's a beast that can't be stopped. Do I like the game? No. Have I played every single one? Yes. Then why? Games are better with friends, and Call of Duty is massive, so it's just a game you pick up because everyone in the damn world will have it and screw it, if it sucks, it becomes something just to chill out on, rank up and unlock some guns and play. And hell, you might like the next one. Importantly though, the formula never ever changes. Hate it or love it, it's Call of Duty. So if you love it, great, you can play it every year. If you hate it, you're no doubt buying it because your friends love it. This is where Gears of War lost the plot big time. For any business, consistency is key. 
you might find something successful and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and feed it to the consumer until they have become until you have become a part of their lives and they can't live without it then maybe you can go and make some big changes because they trust you formula so in my eyes here is how the game was intended to play out i knew i'd heard this somewhere and i can't find the exact quote but it goes as something a little like this it's not well known that the first title in the series was wasn't even supposed to have multiplayer it was just thrown in at the last minute of development and nobody knew how it would be received i picked it up because of the single camp uh because of the single player campaign i actually bought an xbox 360 for the campaign mode alone not much was known about the multiplayer at that time but the fact i fired it up and it went straight to the top of xbox live charts can be said a lot so now we've established that multiplayer was a clear clear afterthought what happened how did it play out now when i talk about this please know i am bearing this quote in mind and i will tell you the bad parts the game also had so the quote is the reason people find it so hard to be happy is that they see the past better than it was the present worse than it is and the future less resolved than it will be right now that's that's clear I'm not viewing the past with any rose tinted glasses. So stop telling me to go back to Gears 1 because here we go. People playing only single player would, and I speak from experience, be utterly, utterly shocked heading into multiplayer. The game honestly told you how to play. Remember the section where the locust bursts through the door and it tells you to stand, spin your grenade at the door. It was a very rigid shooter. It needed to be, it had cover, and it was a glorious moment. When you felt you could interact with the environment, take cover, swap, pop and shoot, it was glorious. I don't need to talk the game up anymore, I love it, I always will. But this is multiplayer and single player. So how did the single player change the multiplayer experience? Well, what was amazing about this experience, and no doubt why I became so invested in the game, is quite literally nobody knew how to play it. This was a brand new franchise. Not even just a shooter, this was a damn cover shooter. Watching and par participating in an always evolving game was honestly amazing. This is where I feel Epic didn't run with the concept that years, literally years of playing time turned the game into. So how people used to play was as you expect. No movement, lots of running. Some people didn't even know you could hold A to run as A was the evade button and the cover switch button. So for months, people wouldn't control the map they would just trot around, stumble on a power weapon, and trade whatever was in their hand, lancer and shoot and cover. Just do very, very basic things. Cover was new. The possibilities were fairly set, it seemed. Sit and walk, take cover, walk and shoot. Then, after many months, the game ramped up in pace. Really ramped up. I remember being a complete fanboy of these two players called Mr. Mayday and Pranksky. They had the game figured out for a while, it was Mansion, and by now, the meta was that you push boom, get boom, and win. Similar metas had developed on other maps, for example, canals, one guy grabs snipe, snipe out commences on bridge or high side, then checks talk, where a couple would be looking to grab the bow, one would rush high, or roam high, or push low to nades, hell, he might even get a headshot picking up nades because predictable play slash animations allow skill to be developed. Anyway, I got sidetracked because personally I just like the idea of the map shaping the meta. So you usually sit and lancer, and maybe one good player would use movement, strafing, the art of stepping side to side movement in a way to make yourself unpredictable and make them miss, and you would get boom, and then nobody could dodge it, pre-patch. But then this guy literally dominated, he killed everyone, I was full fanboy in that lobby and from that point my aim was to get as good as him or better. He would push boom full sprint and would melee and shoot two piece. Everyone. Now this may sound newbie but when you have everyone trotting around and this guy is just going straight in and he will push the boom and kill him and he carried then people slowly started adapting to this learning to back off shoot and stun him and then two piece or body him yourself. The game kept evolving kept getting faster and the development of the weapon slide, so you couldn't take damage whilst picking up the gun, the war bounce, then eventually the strafe to counter the bounce. This happened fairly quickly, and soon the game was all about movement and predictability. The animations and consistency made it a top game. 
all top games have an element of predictability. Just a side note, some people really liked the fast paced side, others couldn't adapt or merely didn't put in the massive amount of time needed to get out of the rigid campaign mode and quicken their play up, and most importantly, understand the game. If you have a snapshot, bait or predict a roll animation and bam, you have a headshot. Others would try walk up and chainsaw, get the odd kill, not weapon slide and crying about how it was a glitch and honestly being bad players that didn't learn or importantly or had just come from the campaign not expecting such a fast paced beating. They would sit and lancer and get sniped and no doubt move um, and no doubt moan or adapt like many people did and think if I sit here with my head out I'm going to get sniped. I'm not going to do that anymore. The list goes on. So what's the point? The game evolved, so what? The point is that the game became so vastly different in multiplayer than was ever expected. Cover was merely a tool to make battles quicker, more intense, more skilled. It wasn't rigid at all. They wanted a tactical third person game. Instead, players flipped the game on its head and it became a fast paced movement and prediction game to a large extent. So how did the game modes influence this? Did they help or hinder this new style? Here is where the game modes luckily, and I say luck because this wasn't planned, came into play. So if I'm correct in saying none of the modes were planned, and multiplayer was thrown in at the last minute, then why did players grow so attached to it? Simply, it worked, in logic and in execution. I remember an interview with Cliffy B, where he stated that, the modes followed the Counter-Strike model, elimination, last man standing so to speak. This no doubt was bound to cause some amazing moments when you are the only player alive in your team. With communication to your team cut, it was all on you. Return victorious and be greeted with an explosive reaction to your win. There was no greater rush in a game than pulling out a 1v4 for the win and being loaded by your team. This was what we knew. This is what we know to have come to as the Gears Twist. Every mode had it, be it TDM, Execution, Assassination. They were a game mode that was new or a tried and tested method but had a twist to make it new unique. Be it talking to the enemy while dead, killing the leader at ends that round, etc etc. Now I will try to break down all the modes. Why they worked, didn't work and any other points I feel necessary. Firstly, let's look at the first iteration in what now has become a trilogy plus one. Gears of War November 7th, 2006. In this game, no servers existed. It was P2P, aka player hosted. Important to note that players were not region locked or put under region sort of boundaries. Players hosted and there was a ping bar, albeit not the most accurate and could be improved if updated. As more people join the lobby, it wouldn't accurately update. Um, blah, blah, blah. But it meant that you could choose to play on a slightly American, laggy connection at night if all the Europeans were sleeping. I'm sure it's vice versa for America. This allowed more people to meet and play at their own time. Also, super quick note, DLC didn't affect players as if you didn't have it, you simply didn't join the games where people were hosting those maps. And if you tried to join, it would simply say you do not have the same content as the host. Not having the DLC did not in any way affect your ability to play the game. Even if you're in a map cycle that had DLC maps in it, you could join and play up until a DLC map came up. And it would kick you, but remember, you're allowed to play every other map. In that cycle and importantly allowed to even join. Ranked. Ranked was Epic's game, was Epic's take on a competitive setting. Ranked would be hosted by a player, the player would uh, be able to customize certain settings to a certain degree but not so much that players wouldn't know what to expect. Remember consistency is key. The values that were allowed to be changed were the map, Bleed out duration, aka the time it takes for you to bleed out or the time it takes for you to get up on your own. The number of rounds, round duration. Now that may sound kind of standard, 
but th this is literally the only game to this day on a console that I have been able to customise my online experience without it being a private match. There were matches online that others player could join, so what did this mean? Well, simply, the players played what they wanted to play. There were no updates, no patching to a certain extent, players played what they felt and wanted to do on that day. I will fully explain the implica implications of these below, but for now I will go on to explain the modes as I feel it's important so players that may never have played the game understand. So now we have established uh, Ranked was a somewhat customizable experience, what else was there? And then there's a picture of the uh, Forever Alone guy that says create online game lobby, no one joins, plays with bots. So Gears of War became quickly empty due to the player separation, bad matchmaking, often creating a new empty lobby instead of putting you in an already existing one. So, player matches and the importance of the social aspect. Players, player matches were again player hosted, except they included more features, so as well as being able to change the map, bleed out, number of rounds, round duration, you could also add map cycle. This meant you could select the six MLG maps to rotate or play the relatively unplayed ranked maps to spice it up a bit, and you could change the weapons swaps, but importantly, uh, most of all, the ability to kick people that join. Self-moderation was a massive part of the appeal of player matches, and hosting them yourself. These sessions um, were public and the community could join yours, so those that didn't fancy playing the rigid ranked mode could hop into a lobby that suited them. For example, let's say Mausoleum and Guardian were relatively unplayed maps. Somebody could host a cycle, switch the maps. People may join and go, God, this map sucks, and go on to join a canals lobby. Or you may find a group of players that also love these maps, and boom, they could add you. And you have formed a little group. You could say, let's play these maps all day. As now you have a group of like-minded people joined because they all like the same setting. Now that's important. Similarly, similarly, the swaps had effects on all kinds of players. Some would host the one map and just have it loop and looped and have snipers everywhere. These were how sniper matches were born. Headshots only. Don't kill with anything other than a sniper headshot or get kicked from the lobby. I can't point out um, more just how important custom games were. I played literally thousands of them. StarCraft 2 is currently struggling due to its lack of custom games or ability to find them. Some newer players may have joined canals and killed them with a shotgun and got kicked and then would either find a new lobby or ask the host why they were kicked and then rejoin, then play by the host rules and then also be brought into the sniper culture. By the way, if you're reading along with the article, there are lots of typos and stuff. Apologies. They would also uh, be brought into the sniper culture if they liked the sound of that. Still, even if you didn't like this the sniper culture, you could always host your own lobby and kick the sniper kids if you just wanted shotguns or kick the laggy two pieces. Each host had a personality, and it's what kept the game fresh, not the modes or weapons, the players. You may find a host that lets anything go. Two piece, boom shot, active down. You can do anything you want and not get kicked. So you might really like that and stay in that lobby until it closes and then have to go and find a new lobby or add the host. Now there's a picture of um, League of Legends being able to name your custom game here. So, naming lobbies. This is a perfect example of why didn't they run with it. What they could and should have done is kept player matches and given the people the ability to name their own lobbies so searching for a canals game may bring up these results canals mlg cycle come and play sniper match 24 7. now that player can pick what he wants a regular mode a mode with try hard players or sniper matches this for me would have been hands down the best feature to ever arrive in Gears of War. Naming your lobby and having the public being able to join would be huge. Similar, in Ranked, 
You may really like a long match, first to 19, or you may just fancy a quick first to three. You could find a game for you. Also, the round duration was pretty a pretty big um, thing for making your lobby popular. Don't set it too long, and people may run around and to annoy you. Set it too short, and you'll have lots of stalemates. A very popular match was first to 19 Ravendown, one minute duration, five second bleed out. People would pile in every round, and then go super try hard for the final up rounds. You could play whatever length you wanted. Some something future games began to lack, you know, the ability to change the rounds. But that's another point along the way, so I'll just gloss over that for now. Anyway, let me just let me just point out these systems weren't perfect by any means. You may get kicked for being too good. They may just want to make space for a friend, so you get kicked out. But that was all down to the host. And if you came across a host like that, you would simply find a new lobby. Or just go and play ranked as anything goes there, no holds bar, just try to win the match. It's important to note that Gears of War 1 did not feature ranks and your statistics were not publicly available. This is a massive thing. Think about that. The game is still played today, 8 years later. Did we need ranks? Think about that. Did we need ranks if the game is still being played today? If you wanted to know where in the world you were, or earn achievements for say getting 100 sniper kills, you had to play ranked. This naturally brought people into the mode and also gave people a reason to try out new guns and tactics. You'd quite often see you think you would quite often think to yourself, this guy has been only using grenades to tag me. He must be going for the achievement. It was pretty fun. Hell for a period there was even first to one rooftops matches where you could boost and take turns to get headshots with Hammer of Dawns or snipers for the achievement. May I add, those are really fun to ruin. So in short, the people that wanted to know how many kills and deaths they had, how many matches they had won or lost, had to play ranked, and at the end of it all, only you or the people on your friends list would know your stats if they looked at the leaderboards. This is something I feel people overlook. The reason in some ranked matches people would happily run in and die 8 times trying to get one hammer of dawn kill, or didn't mind doing badly because there was no pressure, this is stupid pressure that has been invented by publicly showing your stats. In Gears of War 1, this was not the case. People could play ranked, slowly earn their achievements or personal goals. For example, I tried to get as many headshots and curb stomps as possible. I also did this in Warzone because I know people would, uh, I know people would think I acted down and let them get headshot on the way back up. Um, but in Warzone, it would have to be a one shot, one kill. I ended up getting 8,000 headshots online, online, no mean feat may I add, and getting to the top 100 for a long period of time, eventually stabilising in the top 1,000 for Warzone. But nobody knew that. Nobody knew my rank, my KD, my number of headshots. What happened were people played exactly how they wanted to play, and lots didn't care if they were negative, because the in-game scoreboard did not show your deaths, only kills. This meant if you lost, you couldn't look up someone's KD in the game and tell them they were bad. You literally had to say, I'm going to get more kills in that next game and hope my team is a little better. But you had no idea who the most deaths were on your team and importantly, the stats on your team. This means you couldn't say, wow, a level 90 with a 0.5 KD, you're terrible. Your whole job was to prove yourself in that game. That was what was so good about the game. I could um, be in the top 100, but if I got no kills and had a shocker, then my teammates would think he sucks. Or alternatively, you may have a terrible KD, but have one really good match and nobody would know if you got lucky or were good. This directly changed how the game was played. Nobody cared about KD, so the game was very fast as no one was afraid to die. If you wanted to work out your kill to death ratio and win loss, you had to do the division and maths yourself for God's sake. So basically nobody did it, so this meant everybody searched on their own or with a friend at most. Another enormous point that many people forget is how there were no party systems and most people 
I got distracted then. There was no party systems, and most people, importantly, um, a massive overlooked part, uh, point, is there was no party chat, only private chat. So only two people could talk privately. So in ranked, or player, if you wanted to get into the same ranked, you had to tell your friend, there is a lobby, it's mansion, first to six, four minute duration, six people in the lobby. Now there may be two of the exact same lobby, and you may join the wrong one and just say, fuck it, I'll play the next one with you, I'm going to stay in this lobby. Or you may get in the same lobby, but be on opposite teams, but of course that didn't matter because you would go into the game for the chat, the atmosphere, and not so to cheat and tell each other where the players were. You couldn't see it anyway, as there was no ghost cam slash rotating cameras. The cameras were locked in ranked, another massive point. They stopped the team calling out where the enemies were and actually allowed clutches to happen. A massive flaw was host advantage, but people in ranked had an unspoken code. Host goes on cog and the worst players may want to play on the host team and other people may play against the host and make it a tougher match. I think this is why we all loved Locust. The only time it could get a little annoying is when a very good player would host and sit and abuse host all day for easy kills. For kills. But you soon, learnt, you soon learnt those players' names or their typical settings and found new lobbies. Typically, we let the guys with good connections host or the new people. What was cool about Ranked for me is that at the end, uh, more often than not, the host would say, Right, I'm hosting the same again, but on Fuel Depot. <clears throat> so everyone in that lobby would look for again. First to six, four round duration, Fuel Depot. Hell, sometimes the host may even ask you what map you want. So uh, you would immediately form this group and play and play again. Meaning the lobby's filled up faster. And you may even say, I'll go on your team this time. Again, it was a great way to meet players, talk to them as everyone was in game chat. It was a lot of fun, and that's why we play games, for fun. These two game taps had perfect synergy. Those that wanted a 4v4 every time with standard weapons, no swaps, no kicking, anything goes, and the ability cl to climb a leaderboard would play ranked. Those that wanted to invite their friends <clears throat> and play more than two, uh, in a party more than two, would play player matches as those wanted weapon swaps would also play player matches. Of course, you did get the odd three to four man team in ranked, but it was very, very rare. And the game was much more solo in nature with no ratios, etc. So it was a more run and gun with friends than abuse the fact you're in a full team. Also, one way to deal with a, with a team was to simply kill one of them. Because you couldn't talk when you were dead and party chat didn't exist, then there would only now be three people talking kill another person and all of a sudden two people are talking and not two people with four pairs of eyes calling it out it was much more manageable <clears throat> i feel the game modes worked well and for one it definitely showed what the community liked so again just to sum up that point is you know when you when you killed a guy it would cut the communication and he couldn't then hop into party chat because he couldn't talk to each other I'm not going to go into game modes, but the popular modes by far were execution and warzone in ranked. For those that like to get up on their, to get up on their own, um, yeah, execution for those that like to get up on their own, or warzone for those that like to kill somebody across the map when downed, or they needed to, a teammate to pick them up. Annex wasn't an objective. People just used to say it. People just used to play it in a way that it was a never-ending match. It was never played in ranked, as for one, the kills didn't account to any achievements, and two, people just played it in player matches, as explained before, just not to capture the ring and have a two hour long shotgun match. All killing in the middle, trust me, it happened. Assassin assassination never really took off in either mode, really. Here is why I chose the title, why didn't they run with it? They had all this customization. sure there were bugs, glitches, shotgun sponging, lag, even more glitches, but by now it was evident that the players loved the game, the game chat as aspect, the no talking, no spectating around the map when dead, the speed of the game, the predictable, the predictable animations of sniping, the strafe, the long shotgun matches, the map cycles, the no stats, and yes, it was an enormous shotgun fest in public. 
with the odd sniper and boom shot thrown in. However, in competitive play, it was a very different ball game. So, ranks. Also note that Gears of War 2, 3 and Judgment introduced ranks. Gears of War 2 had a skill rank. Interesting, uh, and it made people want to improve. It was flawed, but I liked it. I wish they ran with it and improved it. Instead, they brought in 1 to 100 with one or two character unlocks in between to keep you interested. Needless to say, it didn't. Gears of War surely proves that we didn't need ranks to have fun. Gears of War 3 had 1 to 100 again with the same numbers. However, you um, once you'd reached... Well, that was terrible English in this paragraph. However, after you've reached um, 100, you could re-up and do 1 to 100 again, gaining one skin per re-up. Not fun. I would have preferred that they didn't sell their weapon skins and progressively added them so you could keep unlocking stuff whilst ranking up, rather than having, at level 1, unlock the skin, and then nothing for 99 ranks. They added colours, blue, green and red, I have no idea why they chose those colours at all, plus you needed their DLC to re-up. The ranking system was very boring. Gears of War Judgment did 1 to 50 and allowed you to re-up 11 times, each time gaining a star, hardly addictive. Their ranking system merely promoted XP whoring in bots. It didn't make it more fun and it didn't add skin. Quinn, who has recently left Epic Games, added 1 to 50 skill ranks to Halo 4. Take notes. The Call of Duty system only works as you lose everything and have to re unlock it. Gears of War, you always have your guns, so it's pointless. So, competitive. I said I didn't want to go into competitive, as personally I feel the issue lies in matchmaking and other areas, because a game can be successful without a competitive scene if it's fun. But as the competitive scene most definitely did affect the future of Gears of War games, let me quick quickly touch upon that subject, and of course I'm summarising it very roughly. Please note the bleed out was slightly longer at 15 instead of the usual 5 to allow you to get the down before it got up. Most maps had a sniper on it, plus lancers with a go-to weapon. The sniper's job was to open up the play. You would have either two things, there would be a standoff, lots of lancering, pistoling, trying to get him down for his last down, and then lancer him out, trying to pressure people into bad positions, away from areas, maybe force a roll. Lancering off host was hard, you had to lead the shot, same with all guns. So you would have to rethink and think where he is going, and the and and Lancer and Lancer there should I say, instead of just putting it on him. This is why movements and duking with the strafe was so key. Um, also teamwork was key in coordinating shots. So anyway, oh well, I got sidetracked. Where am I up to? Well, uh, yeah, teamwork was uh, key in coordinating shots. So anyway, then the sniper could push up or headshot someone down. Um, getting it down was a massive thing. Um, it wasn't seen as a newbie with a sniper as seen as it was online because players were so much better and knew the places you could get down, so they just didn't go there. So if you snipe them and you have the numbers advantage, you can push and try and take a 4v3. Or use the numbers to secure another power weapon, eventually whittle them down to one player, where he has to try and cut, clutch it, or stalemate it. People people obviously didn't want to let him stalemate it, as it was a 4v1. So, it began, even though it was a 4v1, you still had to go and secure the round, secure the kill. The other guy would put himself in the clutch spot, and try and shotgun them all. It was intense. Or, on the flip side, it would be a massive four-man push... And um, they may know to the other two team, uh, the other team sends two top, one low, one sniper. So they would four man push top and win the four v two, and then clear clear up the round. Pushes still happened, even with players knowing and being effective with rifles, lances and pistols. Um, we used a hell of a lot in GB scrims and lands. However, just um, however, as many 
just played online, all they got really was the shotgun. Now, I never heard anyone ever calling the shotgun OP. Sure, some people's did do more damage due to connection, but I never once was the term shotgun noob and my dog needs to shut up. Never... What is she barking at? Uh, now, I never heard anyone ever calling the shotgun OP. Oh my god, this dog. Uh, I never heard anyone call him the shotgun OP. Sure, some people did more damage due to connection, as I said. No one ever said the term shotgun noob, and nobody complained about the lack of rifles. After all, we decided how the game should be played. Lances to support when in super tryhard mode. And shotguns as the main damage. However, according to the Gears of War 2 launch, there was a very vocal minority that said they hated the fact the game was all shotguns and rifles sucked. Even though they didn't ever see or play in competitive, they just sucked at shotgun fights and assumed it was overpowered and couldn't kill rifles and couldn't rifle everyone for every kill like other modern games. So instead of putting in the time to learn how to lance it properly, quite frankly, they just cried on the forums. Now the developers should know that the, at the highest level of play that lancers and pistols and rifles were used and not useless so these people on the forums should have been ignored after all a game should be balanced for the highest level of play not the lowest here's my example if i am a football player or soccer player and i am a goalkeeper at the age of 10 and i choose to defend full-size goals and everybody keeps scoring then does that mean the goals are broken or people's shots are too good? Neither. It means I am not ready for those nets and I should either ignore it and keep practicing, saving the shots or try smaller nets. It doesn't mean I go and complain to FIFA officials and ask all goals to be made smaller or ask the ball to be made bigger to catch because that would mean at the highest level of play with professionals the game would change because world class keepers a better than sa saving shots and smaller nets. The same goes for games. Just because I am bad at lancering doesn't mean I should moan and tell everyone that it needs to change because again, that would affect the top level of play and either make it a lot easier to lancer people and that would directly affect play styles. If a top player got the hand on a new buffed weapon, you know, it's going to affect top level play. So now we can see how clearly the balance um, so finally laid out in Gears of War 1 was any slight tweaks would most definitely affect the push heavy playstyles. This is one of the reasons Warzone was never picked up because being able to kill or far with a good team that would coordinate their shots when you go down basically meant you were dead. So there were effectively no downs and it wasn't fun. Warzone was however popular online due to the fact it didn't mean you had to get up close to people in shotgun battles so you could kill them on the floor or kill the guy you sniped down without it being stolen. <clears throat> Again, don't get me wrong, Gears of War 1 had flaws, people could glitch out the map, host advantage was massive, but players in online games used it as a challenge, uh, used it to challenge themselves, and in competitive added this whole thing of, yes, we took four maps on their host. That was almost a Gears twist in itself. Also, you would get to stuck to cover, you would snipe people in the head and they wouldn't die, people would spawn shots. There were flaws like any game. Um, there were flaws like any game will have in its first debut. Um, but now, they had a clear evidence that this new fast uh, close quarter gameplay is what people loved. Where lancers or rifles played a support role to aid the shotgunners. Evidence is clear um, as it held its own with arguably the best games of our time in Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4. It consistently was in the top 1 to 5, even when competing with those giants of the console market. And that was taken from Major Nelson's blog from 2006 to 2008 slash 9. Um, so I think that's enough of what made the game so popular. So I will refer you to my title, Why Didn't You Run With It? So quick note on DLC slash updates, important. Everything that was on the disc was av immediately available to them bar a character unlock that you needed to do the campaign for. As far as I know, there was no maps hidden and locked on the disc. During the two years, we, re re we received a few pieces of DLC. One was a free sponsored one by Discovery, if my memory serves me correctly, 
which featured Ravendown, small action-packed map that became one of the most played maps ever, and Hidden Fronts, Bullet Marsh Garden Process Subway. All these maps were well received, maybe Bar Garden, but even that was used on game battles. Also, please note, the game was player hosted, it would be very very easy to make a note of which maps were being played the most, jotted down the common themes of those maps, and why players liked them so much. I remember watching a Counter Strike interview, and they looked at the most played servers, uh, and then brought them back to the next game, like DE underscore Dust. There was a wealth of information available to developers to find out what swaps were used, e.g. Boomshot for Hammer of Dawn on Fuel Depot. I'll talk about maps when I get to the Gears of War Judgment part, but for now, with many fans waited um, two years, three years for Gears of War 2, and with all its customization been so popular, what did the fans get? Don't worry, these sections will get shorter as you yourself will begin to make judgement calls on if they were the right moves based upon my personal thoughts of Gears of War 1. So, Gears of War 2, November 7th, 2008, exactly two years to the day of Gears of War 1's release. Now I feel it's only important, to, I feel it's only appropriate to start with a few quotes from Epic Games. The ending to Gears of War was heavily suggested a sequel at the end of 2007, Games Developer Conference Cliff Bozinski confirmed that Epic Games did in fact intend to do a sequel to Gears of War. The game's sequel, Gears of War 2, was officially confirmed on February 20th, 2008, and was released at midnight on November 7th, 2008. Despite being published by Microsoft, the Gears of War IP is wholly owned by Epic Games. In an interview with Epic CEO Mike Capps, stated his desire to eventually bring Gears of War to other platforms, such as PlayStation 3. However, he further stated, time and time again, when it came out to figure out what was best to do with Gears, we sat down with Microsoft and they gave us really good, compelling reasons to work with them again. Oh, and here is an end quote. Straight out of the box, Gears of War 2's multiplayer in regards to matchmaking was very, very clunky, and very, very seldom worked. That's something we very, very t uh, take very, very seriously and feel very, very bad about. Well, that was a bloody good way to sum that up. But in all seriousness, what exactly? Why did this game flop so hard? I say this bluntly because if the company themselves feel that bad about a game, something must have gone wrong. Hey, it isn't all bad news though, I actually do have some good things to say about Gears of War 2. Now, this game was announced one year before it came out. I remember hating them announcing it so early because I had to wait almost a year to play it. So this game had a massive hype train. What was really odd coming to think about it, that the game really didn't have anything said about it. I saw a few trailers on the dashboard, the meat shield concept, waves of locust, Marcus sprinting, I thought damn. This is going to be sweet. Classic Gears, even Cliff told us that Host Advantage had gone. So it was going to be classic Gears of War, new campaign, new maps, glitches fixed, sweet. So nothing else was advertised, I thought, sweet, that's that. I'll just wait to buy it like most people. I didn't spend my time reading the forums, reading articles, speculation, reading threads and giving ideas. I didn't even know the forums existed. Why would I ever need to go on the forums or get help from the company. I had no issues with Gears of War really, I really liked the game. So what I think happened, and maybe the longest serving mem forum members can tell me, is that during that year, all the people that were losing shotgun battles, missing full clips of lances, getting out strafed and then pop shotting, getting pop shotted, um, went onto the forums. For me, a forum is an issue place. I didn't need to go on there and say, wow, epic, amazing job on Gears of War 2, on Gears of War 1. I hope Gears of War 2 is great, because that's a complete waste of my time. However, if I, if I had known the forums existed, then I may have said the glitches are annoying, please fix them. But surely that's obvious. Remember, Facebook wasn't this massive thing in 2006 where companies posted balance updates, developer blog updates, nothing was social. They just got on with it and did their thing. So to me... Based upon that reasoning, the only reason that people go on forums are people who bitch about stuff and bitch illogically at that. So during this year, all the whiners must have said this. 
do that, tweak X, tweak Y, and for some reason, Epic didn't discuss their plan changes with the people that were still playing Gears of War 1 over COD or Halo. Because I am sure all the people that loved Gears of War and like me felt no reason to visit a forum would have told them that these were low caliber players that are playing the game wrong and they should listen to those that understand how to teamfire correctly for balanced decisions. This didn't happen though did it? We got dished up Gears of War 2 and let's be honest we were all a little stunned when we first played it. The Great Divide I was, w I was one of them. I wanted to believe. I couldn't honestly believe the franchise had gone this bad. I played the game for two months, where people left after the first week and never returned. Trust me, I have multiple Xbox accounts full of 100 people, and guess what? Maybe 10 of them continued to play Gears of War 2 after the launch. The rest stuck with Gears of War 1. Now, multiply that by the thousands of other friends lists, taking stats from Major, Nason Major Nelson's blog, Gears of War 2 didn't fare anything like its predecessor. Where Gears of War 1 lasted in the top 3 and even top 5 until the next game was released, Gears of War 2 dropped out the top 10 within the first 6 months. Needless to say, Gears of War rapidly picked up again and even got ahead, Gears of War 1 should I say, rapidly picked up again and even got ahead of Gears of War 2 for a few months. So a massive portion of the community went back to Gears of War 1. Who cares? That sentence aggravates me to no end. That phrase, go back to Gears 1. It was the death of the franchise. There will be people sat here raging at that point. Go back to Gears of War 1. I know I was. So if you're on the same page as many of us, let me explain. The beginning of many an update. I knew I was right. After some digging, here is what I came across. The point is that Gears of War 2 issues came in abundance. And one of them were the many updates that left the fans not knowing what to expect when they signed in. A large balance update needs times to grow, develop, look at StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm, massive changes to their expansion, but they, did, they announced no updates for at least 3 months, because they want people to learn how to deal with it, rather than instantly buffing or nerfing something. Anyway, I was thinking how smooth Gears War 1 updates or how to my knowledge there were only two of them the boom shot patch and the glitch for the old weapon slide anyway here it is epic games began working on new content for gears of war uh, for gears of war in august 2006 the updates would remain free according to epic games the first of these updates was released on xbox live january 9th 2007 with the with two new maps released the following day on January 10th, 2007, these two maps reflected the background scene of the storyline known as Raven Down and Old Bones, which depict Gears fighting Locust and missed the crash site of the King Raven Chopper and a museum. Another update was released on Gears of War January 22nd, 2007, which according to Mo Epic Games' Mark Rain, is said to have fixed some compatibility issues with Gears of War release in Japan, and that no other gameplay or functionality features were changed. On April 9th, 2007, Epic Games released their third update containing a new game mode titled Annex, which requires teams to capture and hold certain objectives around the map, as well as additional gameplay tweaks, fixing up some glitches, bugs and exploits. The update was free of charge. Epic Games initially said that four new maps would be released in conjunction with the third patch. However, due to disagreements between Microsoft and Epic Games, decided to put these maps on sale at a reasonable price and then make them free a few months later. The map pack was titled Hidden Fronts. It was released on the Xbox Live Marketplace for 800 points May the 3rd, 2007 and included those maps Bullet Marsh, Garden, Process, Subway, Free downloads of these maps were ava made available September the 3rd, 2007, four months after the initial release. A fourth update on June 14th, 2007 added 250 additional achievement points, bringing the total possible achievements to 1,250. In eight achievements related to Annex mode and the maps from Hidden Fronts, additionally, these updates include improvements to the roadie run to keep players sticking from cover, and a patch to prevent the annex clock from counting down during connection errors. Other housekeeping issues were addressed. 
So, really, everything eventually was free and never even affected multiplayer due to the whole player-hosted thing I explained before. So, everything was really smooth. But something you could note from that is maybe Microsoft stifled their creativity and willingness just to give things times because they wanted sales. Qu quote, and it's the same quote as before, time and time again Microsoft came down to it, uh, what we should do with Gears, we sat down with Microsoft and they gave us a really, really good compelling reasons to work again. Right, I'm getting on with it. I could ramble and talk about this for a bit longer, but I'm narrowing down my points for time's sake. Let's get down to it. Why people? Why did people suddenly drop the game and never play it? We've established that so many people love the game, uh, the way the game had become, fast-paced, lone wolf, skilled shotgun game, but also many appreciate the fact pistols and lances were good if you worked together. Gears of War 2 flipped it on its head. Now, Gears of War 2 wasn't all that bad, it actually did either improve or stay on the same level for a fair amount of things, but there remained a large chunk of flawed mechanics and issues that ultimately hurt the game more than we thought possible. Now, there are some screenshots here of a, a custom interface that a guy on the forum has made um, because he was annoyed that there was no player matches, so he designed something. So that's how much people missed it. So, player matches, uh, playlists and party matchmaking... This is something even I was excited for, mistakenly excited for. What I thought would happen is that you and your friends would party up and find the same game. So we didn't need to private chat one another and tell them the rounds etc um, and get all in the same game. We would just get in the same lobby, everybody would play, so that would be nice. What actually happened was it would put you in a game. A random game with random maps that people had to vote for. Importantly, we had no idea of the ping. Many, many, many games were, had worse had worse lag than I'd ever played before. One important factor for the lag, the thing that really sucked about Gears of War 2, was that it was 5v5. Meaning that because the game was still player hosted, play, people's connections now had to support 10 people and not 8. Now this wasn't an issue for some. However, for people like me with a 1 megabyte connection, it sucked. Although there was never any final word on it, it appeared that the person that hosted the party would end up being the host. So, the two party leaders would be compared, and then the one would be given host, meaning I, for every almost every game in Gears of War 2's history, was given host. So, whereas before I would struggle to host a 2v2, I was now hosting 5v5s, with no choice. Now, from my own experience, the bigger the party you had, the better chance of host. Even though we were told host advantage had gone, it was actually worse than ever because the net coding was so bad that having host became almost a free win, unless you were really, really bad. Host advantage was so strong that players were even forcing host through their settings, meaning they would always get host. A four-man team on hosting Gears War 1 was expected to win every single time, yet now they had five players and even laggier games on host meant it was even better to play on host. The party system, and very importantly party chat, had been brought in, meaning you could now have five people in the same chat channel. Uh, this changed the game the way the game played forever, plus the system had multiple imp implications that we didn't expect. Now, because five people could be guaranteed to be in the same game um, and they all could be in party chat, there was literally no need to go into game chat. Previously, the, this was the only way you could talk to your team. This is something that slowly sapped the fun out of the game. Why, you ask? Well, for one, less and less people were searching on their own, making games more and more stacked versus stacked, which just isn't fun. Or stacked versus non-stacked equals a walkover. So there was literally no incentive to play on your own. More and more people stacked teams. It wasn't like it in Gears of War 1 where you could manhandle a relatively decent team if you were better. You simply couldn't. We had the introduction of a few gameplay mechanics to thank for that. But I'll talk about that further down the line. So, not only was it near impossible to win by searching alone... Being in party chat was effectively cheating. People disagree with me, but I stand by this point. 
So, whereas before, in a 1v4 or something, you may have a chance to kill them one by one, removing communication to either, you know, as they die, they were in game chat and you might be able to sneak up and grab a boom shot and try and clutch it. Now you had no chance because communication was always on. Uh, so they could always help each other. So, well, couldn't they have done that in Gears of War 1 private chat, I hear you ask? Well, yes, they could. But it wouldn't have got them very far. Because in Gears of War 1, your camera was locked to their screen. Meaning you could only see what they were seeing. Not very helpful. And even if someone was alive and you spotted them by looking at the other player's screen. If he was in game chat instead of private chat, he no doubt would have called him out anyway. So there really was no point. However, in Gears of War 2, you had a ghost camera. Meaning you can see everywhere. So, say it gets down to a 1v4, um, the guy that was dead would just go, alright guys, let me just find him. Oh yeah, he's trying to take the boom shot. And then they would go to the boom shot and kill him. Clutch denied, fun over. That really sucked the fun out of the game. Not to mention, this this is not only a negative fun factor and excitement because clutches rarely happened, but the lone searchers wouldn't be having fun because nobody was in chat to talk to or call out to. So... That sucked. And playing a game and losing game after game knowing you were the better player, but losing because they were calling out and team shotting you, wasn't fun. The game didn't even try to match you up against single parties with single parties. It just threw you into any old game. So, with ranked becoming less fun, what other modes were there? That's right, at least we had player matches where I can find people that don't abuse the lancers or three-shot booms that for some reason were randomly buffed. Oh, wait, that's right, player matches were gone. Did I also forget to mention that ranked was first to five, and you couldn't pick bleed out or anything, meaning execution was pointless because you were downed for so long that they just ran over and killed you before you could get up. And even if they couldn't get to you, or shoot you in the head, they would just shoot you from a distance. That wasn't execution at all. Also, execution and Warzone were put together in the same playlist, meaning you may want to play execution on River, but what you actually got was Warzone on Ruins. They didn't even grasp the concept that Warzone players are completely different to execution players. So you would end up with five Warzone players versus four execution players and a random person. So they would win the vote every damn time. You, could, you couldn't you could play the game mode you wanted. Yes, after several, several months this got fixed, but who cares? The community had left. All search times were getting ridiculous. Plus, I couldn't choose who to play with. I couldn't choose to play on a US host for fun at night, or with most of my EU friends were offline. I had to sit and wait for the party system to find me a random match. No more choices. No playing with what you enjoy, no more community, no more like-minded people, nothing. Just grinding out ranked versus stacked teams. The game died pretty fast because the community wasn't able to keep things fresh with their own self-moderated lobbies. We had nothing. I mean, for God's sake, there wasn't even a time map option and still isn't to this day. Meaning, you get 10 people not liking any map choice available. So they try to even up the scores... But with nobody in game chat, it goes wrong, and they can't balance it out, and then you have 10 people playing on a map they hate. What good is that? What logic is that? However, there were some good things. There were really some brilliant maps, ones that felt like Gears. Some had been spoiled by the weapon swaps on there, but we could have played with them on player matches, changed the swaps, and everything would have been fine. But we couldn't. That sucked so much. With no ability to meet players in the game, no way to talk to each other when dead, because apparently there was too much shit talking, they removed it. Don't take take stuff away from us, add stuff. Lots of people use that dead zone as a way to party up, talk and joke, and if someone was shit talking and you couldn't handle it, then just damn mute them. That was, they just took every bit of fun away we had. And I haven't even discussed the gameplay changes. Personally, I'm saving the gameplay issues to last. Why? Well, honestly, for all our bitching at gameplay over the four games, I honestly feel gameplay is the smallest factor in the success of the success and decline of this game. Sure, gameplay obviously helps, and we'll get onto that, 
But if the maps, modes, and even mechanics and matchmaking in, in most games are flawed right from the get-go, nobody is going to stick and learn the game whilst running around on shitty maps with shitty party systems. I haven't even got to the bit where I talk about that dreaded word, title, update, and oh my lord, were there lots of them along the way. But wait, player matches did come back in Gears 2, except this time, they were called social matches. So here is their description. Epic Games, among other things, added a new way to jump into online games. Social matches allow you to join and quit at any time without a penalty, although quitting early will rob you of any experience you've earned. Social matches also allow your party to join a game in progress. In this mode, matches will continue to the next match without having to once again go through the matchmaking progress. Teams will be rebalanced after each game, though parties won't be split up in this project. It's a nice batch of changes for people who are looking for a more casual playing experience. Except, they weren't public, aka it was a server that you randomly got put into and you had no idea what map you're on, no idea of ping, no idea of bleed out, and for the first time, it was exactly the same as ranked was. They didn't even give quicker bleed out to make it more fast paced and fun. So, the mode social is exactly the same as ranked, except it cycles after the end of the game, meaning you have no search time, you earn just as much XP as ranked, and if you rage quit or don't like the map, you will not lose XP. Now this is an okay mode, but the fact remains, people only played it because it was extremely good for XP because 90% of lobbies had bots in. Why bots give XP, I have no idea. I will explain how I will fix the matchmaking further down, but we'll go on. So this was effectively ranked with map cycles. Great, but you never had a full team. It was always bots. It was had no customization. It was bad, bad, bad. So, in short, all of this, all this achieved in doing was splitting the community even more. As for this moment, you had these playlists: ranked execution, ranked warzone, ranked guardian, etc., etc. Then you had DLC playlists. Oh god, could I rant about forcing customers to buy DLC just to participate in matchmaking is a terrible, scummy thing to do. But you should know that. Obviously, their idea was, those who don't have the DLC, well, those who have the DLC, will play in the DLC, and those that don't, won't. However, it went like this. I have DLC on day one. Time to play DLC. Great, played loads of games, then as the weeks went on, less and less people started playing because they wanted to play with their friends, or play regular modes. Surely their, idea, their idea was friends play the DLC, tell their friends to buy it so they can play together, then everybody ends up with the DLC, everybody's playing together. Remember, with Gears of War 1 being player hosted, DLC didn't matter as you could find maps that you owned and play on them. However, being a playlist, it screwed things up big time. Those that never bought the DLC played regular and those that did buy the DLC ended up in regular as there was no people in the DLC playlists for the above mentioned reasons. So how do you play DLC? Social matches. You've got to be kidding me. Now, people that wanted to play DLC, not having fun versus bots. Now, the people that wanted to play DLC were in social, not having fun, they were versus bots. So then, the people that all used to be in regular moved to social. This is ridiculous. The player base was even smaller for ranked, so what it felt like was this. Ranked. No map choice. Took ages to search. Stacked teams. Bad teams. Bad maps. No people punished for quitting. In DLC, no map choices. Took ages to search. No people punished for quitting. Social. The same as above. No customization, etc. Except you had this laggy bot lobby that some of your friends couldn't play because you didn't have the DLC. Not fun. So, even though there was a decent pool of people playing the game, they were so spread out across different modes that people didn't even have fun anymore due to the all the above reasons explained like stack teams, ghost cameras, lagging, bad maps. The game felt deader than it actually was due to this separation and it wasn't fun. Ultimately, the, this mixed with broken gameplay like shotgun shooting the floor at launch, and I'll talk about that soon, ruin this game so i will fast forward to the matchmaking uh of these two games so with gears of war system being vastly superior gears of war one that is in every single way 
and Gears of War hard, two flopping harder than a flop in a flopping contest. What did these two games give us, give its fan base that was getting smaller and smaller and more and more frustrated? Again, I haven't even talked about some mission or guardian because those new game modes were the last of all worries. They were well, they worked well for the most part, and Guardian was a very much loved game mode. So by now, the sections are getting shorter and shorter. For for one, I believe your attention span is no doubt completely gone, and two, it refre- it reflects the feeling of the community. By now, you should have a great idea what worked and what didn't. And again, this isn't even including balance yet. However. Yet again, Epic let us down with their next two instalments. So why was it so bad? It wasn't absolutely awful again. It had its good parts like all Gears games, and that theme will no doubt forever continue. However, the amount of times I have heard, if they just fix these things and then tweak that, it would be perfect. However, it never ever happens, and if they do fix one thing, they create another problem. So what was Gears of War 3's problem? Quite frankly, the beta. Yes, the beta was one of the best Gears of War games I've ever played, minus a few things. We finally got a beta. After the disappointment of Gears of War 2, they clearly wanted to make up for it. They did. The game had dedicated servers, no lag, no host. Brilliant. However, once again, there were far too many playlists. That, and if you didn't own their DLC, you couldn't play on servers. So new players that just picked up the game at Christmas and such, played on laggy matches with no people because nobody... Because most people owned the DLC, so they couldn't didn't have to play on shitty lag. So basically, new players didn't get servers. Great job, guys. Great job. But certain game modes on the DLC, but they they even put certain game modes on the DLC, meaning you couldn't play modes that were brought back because you needed the DLC. So the population died, as there was never any new people trying out those modes because you need you needed the DLC. You know, if you've never heard of Guardian. You're not going to buy the DLC to try it out if you don't know it's any good. Ugh, it's baffling. They they even, um, Gears of War 3 did do a few good things though. They had a system where you could do on-the-fly updates to weapon balance. Um, so you didn't need to wait months for a patch. That was cool. Um, but why didn't they run with it? They could have had ranked with separate weapon balance and encouraged people to play it. There was just no customization. Again, I could rant about destroying the player base within two months, forcing DLC, and still having host migration when we are apparently on servers. Bots in ranked games going 0 to 20 and losing team deathmatch, and displaying playlist numbers, meaning that the ones with the most numbers will obviously get bigger, and the others will die off even quicker. But I won't. The four beta maps were sick, really well balanced, minus trenches which they fixed, but it was pretty damn good. There was zero shotgun sponging, and the snipe registered. However, they messed it up yet again. They introduced two new weapons. And not just two new weapons, two new starting weapons. Meaning that even if they were broke or stupid or imbalanced, you couldn't stop people from picking them up because they spawned with it. Without mentioning balance, Gears of War 2 was slower, with slower movement, easier to rifle, even some guns had aimed down sights, and there was stopping power to slow you down meaning pushes didn't happen due to the stack teams abusing it. So, Gears of War 3 not only continued in this train by keeping stopping power, but added two guns that directly counter the most fun parts of the game. The Sword Off Shotgun was a double barrel shotgun that had a larger range than the Nasher, an enormous spread and jib power, meaning it never sponged, ever. Meaning, you could sprint in, shoot from afar, and even miss by a good two foot and get the kill. This isn't even an exaggeration. That's the sad part. Oh, and if you weren't in jib range, it would down you. What a joke. The most frustrating part is it took all the skill out of shotgun battles. A quote that will always stick in my mind is by a friend that played Gears of War 1, who I helped learn Gears of War 1. So here it is. Every day I used to play Gears of War 1 with you. You and your mates, you used to destroy me every single time. But then after months and months and months, I learnt the movement, the strafe, the timings, and I could get the odd kill on you. And I could even kill tons of people online. Now, in Gears of War 3, you just get this kid that runs up, misses, and gets the kill. And even by some miracle, if he missed, he would just run away, reload, and try again. I feel like I've wasted an entire year learning how to play. That's depressing as hell. That's only for a guy that played a year. Imagine how... 
big the annoyance and frustrating was for the so-called veterans. I'm allowing for a new player to get the kills. What makes it fun? I spoke to Lee Perry. Um, sorry, that's depressing as hell. Uh, I'm all for new players. Uh, I'm all for allowing new players to get kills. It's what makes a game fun. I spoke to Lee Perry, the Gears of War 1 developer, and I remember him saying this, and I paraphrase. It's like a fighting game. If you were a good player and your bad brother played you, you would say win 50 games and he would win two. It's important that he can get those two wins as it encourages the player to continue. For example, he may button mash and pull off a really lucky combo and kill you, but overall, you'll win. I understand that and that's why I never get too mad at new players killing me. As long as it's one sort of it's a sort of thing where I still win overall. However, that's the person getting lucky with a skilled combo in the shooting game or a fighting game. Gears of War 3 is a very different ball game. Not only did the sword off require no skill, you didn't even need to aim it. That mixed with the fact everyone can use it, meaning that again, you would get stacked teams using it or very good players abusing it. I've said this time and time again, I don't care about you giving a new player a strong gun to get the sensation of winning but it has to be only for new players. Meaning, I still have no idea to this day why it wasn't level locked. So after say 20 levels, you couldn't use it. Or even if you had got a thousand kills or a hundred kills with it, then it gets locked. I mean, they had the stats and the ability to do that. They just didn't. And that is why more people left because the only fun thing was shotgun battles and they had been ruined. So a lot later down the road, the sword off got patched and it was a little better. But it was still a joke of a gun that wasn't fun or skilled. However, let's ignore this fact. Because for now, we had a new gun to deal with. The Retro Lancer. The reason I'm talking about these two guns, or touching on balance before the playlist issues, is because the playlist issues only really become a massive issue when the game is dying off and the player base is shrinking. And those two guns did just that. This was a gun that was fixed in the beta to have more recoil. But it was still broken and shit, frankly. I had 50,000 views on my Nerf the Retro Lancer video, so you can tell it was an issue. What did, um, what this did was again kill shotgun battles. The intense amount of shotgun power, the immense should I say, the stopping power it had, and the sheer DPS was stupid. Four bullets and you were downed. Plus, this was an automatic gun, meaning you could miss a few bullets, adjust your aim, whilst forcing him to run away. Um, basically, what happened was this. You would push a shotgun, and yours would sponge 50% of the time, whereas the sword-off wouldn't. So, the sword-off leader may have burnt 50% of his ammo to kill you, but who cares? You're dead, and they'll pick up your ammo. Limiting ammo isn't a good idea of balance. Yes, that is a low blow of judgement, but I will move on. Anyway, the point is, even if you outplay and kill the sword-off player, there's this guy who would just stand still and he'd retro you down every time. It was this wall of stopping power in an instant down. It's not fun to use or play against. Many people again left for good because shotgun battles were gone and it was all about team rifle use. Now I personally enjoyed the shotgun, uh, the Lancer fights for a while, but then it got real boring as you just simply couldn't push. The game got really stale, there was no pushing, it wasn't fast. Competitive, if you ever watched competitive, was slow as anything. The game had no people, it died, and it was stale, and a stale game is never fun. Gears of War Judgment. Gears of War 3 had playlist issues. It still had the grenade tag into wars that everybody hated, more annoying updates, more broken glitches like the sniper aiming at the wall. It did have far less up updates, and the game was far more stable than the seven title updates of Gears of War 2, and a broken shotgun that went from shooting the floor for three months to not working at all to quite literally shooting across the lens of Fuel Depot, forcing people to camp right hand or doing the lefty flip, f which for what it's worth I think is a terrible addition to the game. It came in Gears of War 2 and it's been here ever since. Being able to negate right hand advantage is stupid. The skill is managing to keep right hand. You can see how the sections are getting shorter. Gears of War 2 had no customization, was broken. Gears of War 3 was good, no lag, but the weapons and no customizations ruined it. Overrun. 
Now I will say, this being their new flagship mode, it was really pretty good. This pits two teams, five locusts and five cog versus each other. Their aim is to destroy objectives, unlocking more of the map. I think this is one of the best modes ever to be brought into Gears of War, however it suffers from the playlist issues. Without going into too much detail about how classes work, there's a fair amount of tactics that go into it. I have a few videos on it. I also like the pacing of it, and it's often very close. The fact it features Locust is obviously a fan pleaser. It really is quite good to pass the time, you can play it for a few hours and then jump into standard multiplayer and it breaks it up nicely. I've had a really nice experience where everyone was in game chat wishing each other luck and talking about Gears of War. That's the first time that's happened since like Gears of War 2 days, maybe all the guys that liked the game chat are playing Overrun. However, I wish there was more talking in game chat and forced game chat from all modes really, as quick matches ruin it. You know, being in forced game chat would be brilliant, having everyone been able to talk to each other seems like it is a team game, you know, you would like some communi communication saying, you know, you should switch to a, a corpse or something. I think that for such a team game they should scrap quick and ranked and just have overrun with game chat forced and 5v5 only, no bots. Then, after the end, the teams can vote for a rematch, so it has the speed and quickness of quick match, but everyone was under one player base. I like this mode, I felt it had the Gears of War twist that everybody wanted. The nitty gritty slash solving it. There were some really scummy things, that, things done in Gears of War 3 that led to the demise of the franchise. Here is what I think they were apart from the above mentioned issues. So with no real player matches in Gears of War 2 and DLC splitting the community, I had a Gears of War 3 fair. Gears of War 3 changed social matches into quick matches and basically they were the exact same thing. No customization, bot farming for XP, empty lobbies due to the party system, aka two people on a four uh, two people on a four player search, none of them would fit because they wouldn't fit in the same team. So it would give them into a new lobby. Now with the old system, three of them may get in and one guy would get left out. But so be it, that's the way the world works. You can miss out but you're in a full lobby and you're not separating everyone. That guy's got to wait for the next match. Here is how I see the best way to manage the quite ridiculous playlists. Right now, with quick being faster in every way and still earning XP and no customization means there is no point in playing ranked. So, you either have one mode so everyone is together or you have three modes. Now bear with me, this is what I propose. I feel it would be great if ranked only had certain maps and cycles. More people would search if they knew they were getting a customised experience. Rather than TDM on Escalation or Gondola for example, they would get the best maps for execution and then if they search ranked King of the Hill they would get the best maps for that mode. More map and mode specific to speak. That or you can only play with set loadouts, e.g. Nasher and Lancer or Marksler and Lancer, that you cannot change once selected. This means you must get good at picking the right class. Which reminds me, Gears of War Judgment has now introduced a class system. However, they didn't use the create better picks or small strategy with their classes. They just removed having two primaries and gave you a grenade to spawn with. Which means, unlike in previous games where you saw... An ink or nade has been picked up and then you could sit back, wait and evade it. You can't now. Everybody has grenades and they're thrown off hand so you can't tell what grenade they have and how to react. <clears throat> I even tried learning things like, okay, Baird has frags and Sophia has inks. However, you can change after every death so it's impossible to see who's got what and adds a random look element to the game. That's never fun. On to the main of it. Now... In a perfect world, I feel there should be no quick match or ranked. Even calling it quick gives it the notion that it is better at searching than ranked. I believe they should do it like League of Legends and Gears of War 1 to uh, Gears of War 1 used to do it. So, step 1, introduce a proper bot lobby. <clears throat> Gears of War is trying clearly to introduce new players to the franchise and that's fine. However, gimping other modes and mechanics to do so is not they need a proper learner's tool. League of Legends has a system where you search either alone or with friends and you get matched against a full team of bots on hardcore difficulty. The XP is lower for those that are a higher rank than it is for those that are lower ranks. 
However, once you're on max rank, you earn almost nothing. So say you were prestige or stay at 50, the only reason for you to be playing bots is if you just fancy chilling out on bots or if you want to play with a new friend and help him learn the game. This creates a good environment where new players can play bots and not worry about getting crushed by real players. This is a great system by League of Legends and should be copied. So, with the really, really new players taken care of, where do the casuals slash medium level of fun slash tryhards go, being that ranked isn't their thing? Normal matches. This is where you play 5v5 against human players. When somebody leaves, a bot replaces them. XP is the same as ranked, except there isn't a bonus for winning, meaning lower XP overall, and a map rotation occurs. People are allowed to search in up to 5-man stacked teams. Stacked teams are kept track of in-game, but not applied to the per uh, stats, such as KD are tracked in-game, but not applied to the person's profile, they're not publicly available. The game modes are a rumble pit, and rotate each time. This removes the need for 50 playlists and creates a fun mode of all game types. Ranked matches. This is where you play 5v5 against human players. When someone leaves, however, a bot does not replace them, as bots, 99% of the time, will feed and will drain the other lives, and it becomes impossible to win a game like that. However, with 4v5, uh, all humans, it is possible. The removal of bots from ranked is key. XP is the same, as players would be ideally a skill rank, Halo now has one of them, um, or leaderboards. This is the only game mode that should sta uh, track stats and make them public. Players are not, repeat, not allowed to search in five-man stacked teams. They are allowed to search in a maximum of two people. This reduces the complete stacked teams and makes searching quicker as it can pair up teams. Um, weapon loadouts are selected one by one. And publicly shown so one person picks the Nasher say player one and the other person picks the Markser once all the teams are locked nothing can be changed now they can't switch at all at the last second so if you see a team slowly massing up sword offs in the picks you can counter them with your picks now the map will be different only the maps best map should be used for ranked and there is an option uh, and there is a ranked option available for each mode, I think. Unlike normal, where it is Rumble Pit, that's why people play Rumble Pit, because they really fancy Domination or TDM. Um, if they really fancy Domination or TDM, then they play ranked. If they just fancy anything, just a good fun game, they'll play Rumble Pit. Also, custom settings for ranks such as Bleed Out, etc. would be nice. The way normal matches... Um, that way, normal matches will naturally become the sort of player matches that we crave, and the lobbies will be either naturally full of either teams that want to have fun or lone wolves. This is for the people that do not care about stats. So, I will say this becomes naturally more fun, as for ranked, this is where people go for the win and bonus XP. Currently, I feel there isn't enough differentiation between the two modes to merit the longer waiting times and much tougher matches. These, these changes should occur. You see, having quick and ranked effectively doubles the playlist and halves the population. In the UK, for example, currently we have 500 people in TDM and 20 in ranked. All of those people want to play TDM, but there isn't a mode for them as they are split all over the place. My idea aims to solve this. Currently, the mentality of players, again, and this is based off my feedback, Quick matches are exactly the same as ranked, but there are, le are less stacked teams, which people like. I feel this reason uh, is why people play ranked and don't play quick. They see them uh, as different mind as different mindsets. I'm in ranked, I need the best team, I must try hard. Quick matches like, ah oh well, it's only quick, and they hit search alone. If there is only one mode or a more streamlined mode than those single parties afraid of ranked won't be. They'll be searching alone, so will others. There will be thousands of more so, uh, solo people queuing up together. It would be much better, to put it bluntly. So, there we have three playlists instead of 20, and it's much better. They could add one more, maybe party mode. Um, so, you know... There, they try new things, new maps, new settings, new weapon swaps, whatever. 
but really that could also be thrown into Rumble Pit. And if it became really popular, um, you could just branch out and add it as a separate playlist. But ideally, you want to keep all players together. Gears Judgment, in fairness, did try to do this. It only has four modes. However, there are just too many playlists, as before. So it's even worse. Less modes, but more playlists. One thing I hate is splitting player bases. You see, Gears of War 3 did this with their DLC, and Judgment did not learn. In fact, it messed up. Messed up big time. Instead of making the free DLC mandatory and putting it in TDM, they made it a DLC playlist, which makes no sense, as the DLC is free, everyone has it, it should just be in the rotation. Not only this, but they added a VIP section, which means those that bought it um, play on their own special playlist, earning bonus XP. I actually have had this spoil my friends. As a non-VIP owner, you see, I wanted to play TDM, and so did my friends. However, they didn't want to play on one times XP, instead of six times, as they bought boosts that stack and they didn't want to waste their day boost so they left me so because i don't own their dlc or xp boat boosts i can't play with them this again splits the player base even more if you want to play tdm you have these choices tdm quick tdm rank tdm dlc vip four choices for one game mode crazy what they should have done is have double XP tied to the person's account, not playlists. But then you wouldn't have friends telling each other to buy VIP so they can play with each other, would they? Imagine in League of Legends if you bought a day IP boost and to play with your mates they all had to buy one. It's stupid. In League of Legends your boost is tied to your account so everyone plays like normal. However, Epic's idea was clearly to force people away from each other until they all buy VIP. However, history has shown us this never happens. All that happens is players leave your franchise. So, I think after listening, uh, I think after all these points, I'm not even mentioning gameplay. People now understand how stupid they see, how stupid they sound when they say title update six is coming out and it's going to fix the lancers. Everybody will come back and play. It's the matchmaking and entire design of the game that is flawed. Not the balance, not the updates, because believe it or not, most people don't give two shits about balance. They want fun with their mates. If you are interested in hearing about the utterly baffling game mode and gameplay balance decisions, read below. Let's begin with game modes. I'll make this shorter, but seeing as this is my last ever Gears of War talk, I wanted to be thorough. So I never have to answer questions again, quite honestly. Remember that the, all these modes suffer from playlist slash bot issues. Execu execution slash forums. Cliffy B said he loves the skilled Counter-Strike model, last man out and thus execution was made. Needless to say, copying a skilled franchise paid off big time. This mode was used in every tournament ever and played up until Gears of War Judgment removed it and then re-added it due to popular demand. But why would they even remove it? People love this mode. However, numbers in fairness had dropped to zero per, for the past six months of Gears of War 3. So maybe they believed people had gotten bored of the game type. However, this wasn't the case. And asking anyone in the game why they didn't play Execution, or anyone with half a brain cell would be able to tell you why. That's right, Epic. Don't listen to the Epic Games forum. They just bitch and cry and moan and have no idea about feedback and listening to them killed off your franchise. Your forums were not full of the community. It was just full of the moaning bad players that wanted skins, new DLC, and the rare good people on the forum got banned, blocked, threads got deleted We were because we were offending your game. Well, fuck you. Because we put hours of work into some of those threads just for some white knight forum kid to go... Go play Gears of War 1. They pissed everybody off saying that. Please ask the community that don't visit your forums or those that got banned how they feel. Because that forum became some sort of propaganda place. Anyone knew only would see good things and they wouldn't see feedback. I mean, for God's sake, if you did listen to any feedback, etc., then you're listening to the wrong voices. Why not just ask in your game calendar? Should we remove Locust and Execution? Please vote. We didn't get that though, did we? We got banned for saying, remove XP from quick. And the only threads ever left up were, 
trading green skin for red skin. Am I banned? Am I banned? Am I banned? My rank is reset. Rank deleted. 400 hours lost. Am I banned? Rank reset. Please help. Anyway, that's that rant over with. So, Execution wasn't being played nearly as much as Gears or 1 or 2 for a few reasons. It isn't at the top of the list. It sounds stupid, but new players will see the TDM and search for it as they don't feel they need to try one life game mode. TDM may as well be further down the list as players will recognise it anyway and then they may try new modes. People respond better to familiar names, so renaming it to Last Man Standing probably would have helped. Other major reasons why people don't play it anymore. When the game launched, Gears War 3, it had Man Up Rule. This effectively killed everyone's desire to play. For those that don't know, what this meant was it was 2v1. Instead of it being a stalemate and the other two players having to push to get the kill and the win, what actually happened was the team with the most players would camp and would win. This meant everyone now camped because it was the job of the one player to take out the two, rather than the other way round. So we would get double teamed and it wasn't fun. That, mixed with party chat cheating and ghost cam, as explained before, made it unwinnable and unfun. It took nearly five months to remove this, and by this time, everyone had left Gears of War 3 or gone to TDM, where at least the man up rule made sense, as you didn't want to wait 30 minutes again because it had been stalemated. It was only first to three as well. Half of my Gears of War 1 days were spent on raving down 19 rounds. Execution players like more rounds. Making it only three meant people left and now had even longer waiting times than playing times. <clears throat> First to five is still very quick. Increasing the rounds make people play faster as they know they have rounds to play with. I feel there should have been a first to ten, or players allowed to host their own lobbies for personal taste. You see, if the first game, if the game is first to nineteen, that's like a potential of forty rounds. You really think people are going to camp it out when the game is four to three? No, because everyone would pile in, so it'd be fast-paced for thirty minutes, and then ten to five minutes of slower rounds. However, being first to three and then five meant people camped right from the off and it wasn't fun. That and cheap tactics like grenade taggings meant nobody camped and nobody pushed and nobody played it. Sure, grenade tags have now been removed from judgement, but we had to wait three years for them and it put even more people off the franchise. People liked the game modes, just not the mechanics that had been applied, so everyone left. It was a big shame. Remember, they added execution back in gears judgment however you only spawn with a lancer or a shotgun and with eight bullets and being as though they added the ability to jump off ledges in the maps were designed for team deathmatch it meant adding execution that wasn't planned was a lot of running around on bad maps not much action no grenade tags is certainly nice but we had that in gears of war one the game mode has slowly gotten worse not improved it feels slow and stale not a gears of war game tdm this game mode in Gears of War 3 was actually fine, often campy due to the nature of easy spawn traps slash height advantage maps, but this mode was actually fine at launch, hence why it never died. TDM maps are new to Gears of War, War, to Gears of War so I expected issues, that's no worries. Maybe less corridors, but we are happy with TDM. In addition, um, the ability to jump off ledges and the maps were designed for TDM, which means there is now less spawn trapping. But like in all modes, there is a lot of corner camping and running around just to find people. It doesn't feel strategic at all because basically they're COD maps. Lots of corners, things to jump off. It doesn't feel like a Gears of War game to me. Sure, there is no spawn trapping and the maps are bigger. But you just don't see enough people on the map. And when you do, they either grenade you or stim you or two-piece you. Yes, the two-piece is back in full force. Why or why or why? King of the Hill. A great mode. For Gears of War 3, hindered by one thing. It wasn't King of the Hill, it was an Annex hybrid. Epic, I believe, wanted to lose the Annex name so new players would understand it. That's perfectly fine, but now everyone knows what it is. Surely you could just make it make it so you have to stand in the circle to earn the hill points. Faster points, less setups, easier to break. Again, it fell into the trap that you could capture the hill and set up around it so they couldn't push into the hill at all the lancers and retro lancers and stopping power. Creating it so you didn't have to be in the hill meant it it went from a fast paced piling and shotgun to capture and lancer from a distance. This was meant to be the true fast paced game that Gears needed and it failed. 
this was well loved in the community but the issue with bots filling lobbies camping meant it was removed from gears of wood judgment the game it's not the game mode's fault or the players just the way it was designed you can't blame players for setting up and lantering if the game mode encourages that domination i like the fact this replaces king of the hill as it has more hills setups are harder to find um the maps however are so large it ends up being a close game not because the players are any good but by the time you've captured a or c or b either a or b or c has been taken this game mode is a lot of running and i haven't heard many too positive things about this mode making a game hard um is making a game is hard because you have to have good maps but if the game is flawed nobody will like it look at gears of war 2 awesome maps but other things ruin it and gears of war judgment some good ideas for modes but some of the worst gears of war maps i've ever ever played on so capture the flag slash bomb defuse you're probably thinking what well i have a few sources that tell me that there's going to be a bomb defusal mode in gears of war judgment this way this may work nicely um you know a proper objective not so many pointless rings i originally wanted capture the flag as it would be really fast paced and fun this this is something the game needs maybe the bomb mode can do just that but i fear that you know like things like this they should have been added at launch and not be dlc no doubt it'll make for another four playlists and some people won't buy it and the population will die Personally, I won't be buying it as I'm done with their attempts at making me feel like big things are on the horizon when really they aren't. If this was, um, you know, what was I going to say? Um, you know, making big things like they're going to be on the horizon. You know, if this was at launch, we may all be loving it, but you're hardly going to go and tell your friend to go and buy Gears of War Judgment because this future DLC may be good. It just doesn't work that way. You've lost the trust of your fans and things like this needed to be here at launch. Special Event Playlist This is something I said in my last article. Gears of War 3, they named the playlist something random and nobody ever knew what it was. I said simply call it the Special Event Playlist so people know what it is and have, a, have the description tell the user what is currently on. One shot, one kill, for example, doesn't tell a new user that it's only one shots. You know, they should play it. It's a one-time special thing. They have now done this, and it works a lot better. There is also no ranked and quick. It's all under one player base, which is nice. For the multiplayer, they should use my idea or something else's that tidies the playlist and has proper thought behind it, like the duo queue system so no stacked teams and only bot lobbies. They need something that makes less modes more people in the same searching pot looks cleaner and thus has quicker search times also note that four months ago into gears of war 3's life cycle i made an article where i said people had lots of feedback on the menu such in-game lobby to look better that never happened we have the same menus same ribbon same statistics it looks tired rushed and bland event calendar this was a very good idea. Loved it at the start. Patch news, messages, updates, saving on DLC. However, that's all it became for nine months straight. Just advertising DLC. I would love to see this event calendar return, but improved or more frequently updated. Polls on the calendar so players can vote for events, patch ideas, tell us up and coming events, or discuss, for example, what maps do you want to be in ranked this week? In the end, it felt like more of an advertising board than an event calendar. It was still telling me to buy the DLC when I owned it all. This is what I mean by why didn't they run with it. The event calendar was a great way to tell people what was happening. They had got ideas for maps. You could have got ideas for what people wanted in ranked, what weapon swaps. Do you want first to five this week or do you want first to ten? Instead, they just scrapped it. What a shame. Map design. Lots of people wanted me to write about this. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever played StarCraft. Well, it's a real-time strategy game, and it's pretty well balanced. In Brood War, StarCraft 1, the game would never be balanced uh, weapon-wise until they weren't sure it was the maps causing the issue. I would have loved it if Gears of War had had this approach. A great example is maybe, instead of buffing the incendiary grenades so they aren't an instant kill, maybe they should make smaller maps. 
so they can be used in choke points to affect the map rather than being chucked into a wide open area and ignored thus giving the impression that the grenades suck when in fact it's the map that doesn't really work with them more often than not it's the maps that make and make a game amazing example we all like to lancer we used it in Gears of War 1, Scrims, etc, but Gears of War 3 made it too easy. We all feel as a community that the best maps have been produced in Gears of War were by far Gears of War 2 and Gears of War 1. The Gears of War 3 didn't seem to work, but that's not to say all the maps were bad. We had a handful of good ones, just there was too many corridors, too much height and dead space. You know, no reason to go to that area, which is fine if there is another main thing to focus on, but often the maps felt too big, too spread out and not that gears in your grill feeling. In Gears of War Judgment they have gone too far with the jump off the ledges idea. There are ledges that you can climb down and drop down for no reason other than to show that they can do it. There is too much running. I mean they have even brought back Blood Drive, the most campy map in history. Things like bringing back Escalation and Blood Drive to me show they have absolutely no idea what we like and that's worrying. Even if they were to bring back old maps that we love, I don't feel that it would work given the new mechanics of the digger, the mantle kick, broken still may I add, nades and jump all designed to get you off cover. Sure we would love to see some of our old maps back. Uh, oh, I lost where I was then. Yeah, sure we would seem to love some of our old maps back if they worked, but really we want new maps, new good maps that we can all marvel over. We don't want flashback maps that we have to pay for. The only reason we liked them in Gears of War 2 was because they came free with your copy. I'm not going to pretend I understand map design, but as a player of 7 years, I will post some of my favourite maps personally, and maybe somebody can figure out why we like them. So War Machine, Canals, however, being able to jump off the bridges would be so stupid. Only having a shotgun and no lantern means you couldn't cover torpedo and then push up to shotgun. The new mechanics just floor old maps and that's why I hate the new style because to get the new style to work you have to remove the elements that made gears gears. Anyway, I like mansion, hotel, checkout, old town, river, clock tower, the Gears of War 1 edition, security, avalanche, sanctuary and mercy. In comparison, here are some of my hated maps. Overpass, Sandbar, Day 1, Stasis, Escalation, Blood Drive, Day 1, Gondola. I know thousands of people would bite your hands off to play these good maps, but with the new mechanics, I just fear they wouldn't work. Plus, we'd have to pay for them. Weapons. Please note that they have changed the way weapons respawn back to Gears of War 1, meaning you can't hold one ammo and camp with it, another one will spawn, this is a good addition. Also, not having to pick up ammo on the floor is a big help as it stops that annoying situation where you wanted ammo but ended up with a lancer. Now bearing in mind I can't comment too much uh, as I explained before as a lot of the issues were based on the maps, but even when playing on brilliant maps like Checkout, there were some glaring issues for me and my subscribers slash viewers. Let me get this clear, we like rifles. I don't want all Gears of War 1 gameplay, it got repetitive at times and wasn't very diverse and normal because the players were bad and you could just shotgun everyone. However, in, scream, in scrims, the weapons really shone. I like the tactical map control, lances, but there must be a balance. I'm going to briefly surmise uh, a few of the weapons and only its issues. There are plenty of good things about Gears of War 3 and Judgment, but I'm only here today to discuss its flaws and aim to make the game better. So Nasher, uh, I'll start with this gun so my intentions aren't clear that I'm some idiot Nasher fanboy. Currently in Gears of War 3 it's too strong. The range was getting close to the title update 6 of the shotgun of Gears of War 2. It was basically who lands the first shot and you only needed to 2 to down and then when you land your first shot the player is so red that you just simply back off and down him. It wasn't for the Nasher fans and it wasn't certainly for the Nasher haters. Sponging is also ridiculous at times. I understand this isn't PC and perfect hitbox registry and movement is near impossible, but when using Xboxes on LAN and both being coast, we have still taken four shots at point blank. The shotgun seems way better at distance than close. Now in Gears of Judgment, actives have been removed. This helps tremendously and the range has been reduced. It's probably the best shotgun we've ever had. 
The only slight niggle is the spread of the bullets is wider than the reticule, meaning that you can have an aimer on the player and yet pellets will cause uh, the pellets will miss, causing the player not to die. However, fair play to Epic. The shotgun is really good now. However, you only start with eight bullets. That's far too little. Hammer burst. Add a f realistic fire rate cap and the gun will be balanced. We all hate being killed by an auto no recoil rifle, not to mention that you can spray it at point blank with your mod. It's purely a fire rate cap issue, nothing more. Uh, you can't aim down sights anymore, the recoil has been re increased. It's not nearly as bad as it was in Gears of War 3. Again, this gun has been improved. The, gu the Retro Lancer. This gun gets me angry like no other. I'm sorry it does. I know Epic, you've said tap fire and go requires learning, but it really doesn't. The gun is so dominant at close range in such a way that the Nasher really cannot kill it. You can full auto anyone down, which I also find absurd because the Nasher is the only close quarters gun that allowed you to beat an opponent with the years of movement and skill that you have learnt. Now that's gone. This gun should have been left out of Gears of War Judgment. Good things are the tap firing issue is better, it's not too strong and the failed retro charge doesn't do any damage which again is much better. Um, you get the idea, all the guns are better um, in Gears of War Judgment for the most part, it's other things now that are letting the game down. Amazingly, the sword off, I don't mind this gun, many others hate it but I think it's balanced as a gun, it's designed to blow someone up, <laughs> it's as balanced as it can be, there's no massive reticule now. <clears throat> the gun doesn't down you, and it sure removes shotgun battles, and I hate that fact, but the gun itself, I have to say, is okay. <clears throat> Lancer. The all-around rifle. Okay at close range, solid medium, good for long-range pressure. I feel that got lost somewhat in Gears of War 3. It's flat out the best gun in Gears of War 3. I could have played every gun with the Lancer, no problem. Hit firing down shotgun users, rifling from afar, and win. Trust me. I did, and I have. There is no reason to use the shotgun with this gun. In Gears of War Judgment, it is better, but it's still designed to be picked up and used as a solo gun, so it must still be viable to be used as a solo gun. I've played many a game where you lancer everyone, and you can still hit fire, even though they've buffed the recoil. This is no longer the support weapon that used to be in scrims. It's a primary gun, and it's strong. I wouldn't say it's overpowered, but it's close to being overpowered based on the fact it has no real competitor for what it does. The clip, although it has the same amount of bullets in Gears of War 1, seems to last forever. Maybe the ammo count is too high as people can stay camped forever, or maybe the clip is too large. In Judgment, that certainly doesn't seem to have been changed. I think the issue like this for many players is that Gears of War was designed or sort of led its way to be an intense close shotgun experience, something unique that no game offers. The Lancer downs in one second, the Nasher kills you in that time also, except it doesn't matter if you miss a few bullets of the Lancer because it's automatic, so unless you jib them or are in very very close range, you will most likely lose to a Lancer and he doesn't even need to be that accurate. This just ruins the game for a lot of people. Boom shot. This gun began its Gears of War 2 lifespan with three shells of ammo. We then realised it was too much and it was patched back to two. So you can push in between the two shots. Being that there now can be multiple boom shots out at once, this surely must be changed back to two bullets. There used to be an annoying glitch with a sniper where if you aim near a wall, you aim at the floor. This makes the gun near useless at times, it didn't feel like a power weapon, but finally, pop shotting returned, and no scopes work better, it's a lot better, it's really fun to use now, however this is the first time the sniper has been good since Gears of War 2, so people lost their patience and no doubt left the franchise, again it took too long to fix. I'm not going to talk about any other weapons, as for the most part they're fine, I hate talking about balance, as by now I've shown you the main flaws. The Scorcher is a little OP as well, still, it has too many bullets. So, we're on to the final section. Thanks for tuning in everyone. We're going to hit the two hour mark, hopefully you've enjoyed my final talk. Uh, downloadable content. This is where my viewers and subscribers were a little mad at a few of the decisions and the knock on effects it had on us as players. 
We understand Epic are a business and must create DLC and revenue, be it through skins, Jamayad are awesome to some people, <laughs> and maps, etc. But the issue was basically how quickly it destroyed the player base. The player bases were fairly small. Some people in ranked, some in quick, some in horde, some in execution, others in TDM. But then the DLC came and all of a sudden, all the casual friends, that those that played on the odd days, suddenly couldn't play on servers. They hated the lag, and after not really giving Gears of War a try, they went back to other games. They weren't going to buy DLC to play on servers. They didn't like the game that much, they didn't get into it enough. So, then, the, the, then those that stuck with the lag couldn't play with me, as I, like many others, refused to play off servers, so they also just left. I don't like the fact that the DLC cut the community. As a test, in Gears of War 3, I deleted the DLC to see how many people are playing. There were hundreds. They were all still playing with their friends that had re-upped, meaning that DLC players were playing with no DLC players off servers, off servers out of choice. So clearly, people prefer a social experience over DLC and, you know, and servers. Game modes, like Guardian, that require DLC are also stupid. New players that don't play Gears of War aren't ever going to buy it or buy DLC in the hope that it's good. I also hate no player open lobbies. I'm all for DLC, I bought it all. I just don't like it cutting people from the community so quickly. I have no doubt I've missed more things. Um than I would have liked, but there you have it. All my thoughts on Gears of War, everything I've ever thought about the franchise. I haven't even touched upon things like the fact the game's become solved, as we're all so good at it now that it becomes hard to innovate because no fe no new features, and it's starting to become tired. I may have a podcast on that anyway, but I highly doubt it. A final point is Epic is always trying something new, aka class system, and then brought it back to the old system later on to appease the fans. But all that happens is they either muck it up, like today's announcement of a classic playlist with Nasha starts, but you still spawn with grenades, so it's not classic and it makes no sense. They seem to portray that they are this fearless break uh, and break boundaries, when with the slightest outcry from the community they change everything back to the way it was. They, they try something new, it fails, they bring it back, bring back old maps, and it still has the same flaws as it did back in the old day, and suddenly we're expected to feel happy. It's so frustrated to hear people say, Z, play Gears of War, come on, there's going to be a classic mode available now, go and play it. They sort of piss you off Epic and treat you nicely at the same time. Did I even mention how the game lost its entire dark feeling? Every map has been bright and lovely, and it's lost its fans that loved gore. I remember Cliffy B saying, Players don't like spending long times on dark maps such as Mansions. I disagree. How many games did you play on Mansion and love it? Scrims and everything. Anyway, I thank you, everyone, for creating, playing, and being a part of Gears of War. Long may it continue. I'm just trying to help. This is probably the most in-depth thing I've ever said and written on Gears of War. So I honestly, truly hope things have been read and heard and even taken on board maybe. Man, if I could sit and help balance the game all day I would. I really want to help. I hope it didn't acro come across as rude or bitchy or clueless. I don't know about the process of developing and making games, but based off my minimal knowledge, I tried to create a list that I feel if was changed would help the cycle of the game. I hope Gears of War does get many more months of support than Gears of War 3 did because after 6 months the game became very stale and it felt like we weren't being heard. Anyway, thanks for your time. Thanks for reading, thanks for watching and supporting. Also, huge thanks if you've stuck right to the end. If you did stay right to the end then please drop and say a comment on, the, on my YouTube channel and start the comment with the word Z and then the hyphen and your comment. And then I can see who stayed to the end. And then whatever you want to say. Then I know you are the awesome people that stayed and listened to me for two hours. Wow. So, you can follow me at Twitter at Video Fletcher. And my YouTube is Video Fletcher. Um, I'm going to leave you with a few quotes. Um, again, 
I know nobody would probably have listened to this, but if you did listen to it, thank you. Um, if you did listen to it and you see stupid comments on the forums like, go play Gears 1 or, you know, why, why are you doing this or, you know, just really stupid comments, link them to this article because... I find I find it really this is why I've made it. I know not many people are going to watch this or listen to it, but I just made it because it really does piss me off when people act as if people are clueless. They're like, "Oh, you should just play Gears of War. Just go play Gears of War 1, man, if you like Gears of War 1." It's like, "We don't we don't want to play Gears of War 1. We played that for f- 4 years, 5 years, 8 years. Like, come on, we want we want a new game." It's it's frustrating. So, I'll leave you with a few quotes that I thought were good from the uh, the videos that I've posted and stuff. So again, honestly, thank you so much if you stuck to the end. And if you didn't, thanks for just sticking and reading a little bit of it. I know if you've read it from the article, it hasn't been proofread or checked because I wasn't even going to publish this article. I was just going to leave it as a script for me to read, but I just posted it anyway. Um, so yeah, all the mistakes and stuff, that's just me being lazy, not checking it correctly yet. Um, so anyway, here are the quotes. Um, so here we go. The skill is gone. I don't understand why the games why games these days try to become more like Call of Duty. Another example that's gone down this route is Halo. Halo series up until Halo ODST and Reach were amazing. Epic have turned their game into a game that is the main goal of making as much money as possible getting as many people to play it as possible and forgetting the gameplay that made Gears of War what it is. We want gore. Gears of War 2 blood and gore. The game lacks locust. The Nasher is not OP. It's what makes Gears Gears. No one plays Gears of War to camp and Lancer. They want that in your face shotty v shotty action. The only people who say the Nasher is OP are the people that don't play Gears for what it is and are trying to get Epic to change it into some generic washed up third person shooter. No down but not out, no meat shield, no execution, no picking up player to get a smoke and pistol ammo, no second primary, too many power weapons, too quick pickup weapons, no active reload, no locust versus cog, confusing, no nade tagging, inconsistent shotgun, for a good example, um, blah blah blah, glitchy buggy wall bouncing, melee shotgun noob combo, super sponging, crap asymmetrical maps. It's only Gears in name to me. I have gone back to Gears of War 3. Yeah, right. Stopping powers in Gears of War 2. It pisses me off when they fuck with the Nasher. Using assault rifles is no fucking fun. This is not Call of Duty. Nashers and war bouncing gives Gears of War unique gameplay. Fuck all you bitches at Lancer. So, there we have it. Those are some thoughts. Just a few choice words from the community. Um... So yeah, again, it's probably the last time I'm ever going to see Gears of War on my channel, unless um, I get fiber optic broadband and I can stream. I don't really feel like making videos on it. So now, when somebody asks me, Z, why don't you play Gears of War Judgment? What do you think on Judgment? There you have it. That's two hours. I've just sat and spoke for two hours, and if you've sat and listened for two hours, that's brilliant. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end it now. Peace. Hope you all had a good time playing and watching me have fun on Gears. Hopefully it might continue, but there we go. Peace, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed.